Good morning from the city of Mitcham. It's currently coming up to about 10 o'clock. It is hard to look at the time on this timepiece. And I can't let the phone slip because I'm not exactly where we're getting to get the battery. What happened there? Oh, running out of battery. All right, it is currently. I don't know why I bother. Things in the shower. It's 13 minutes to 10 in the city of Mitcham, and I've lost a bag. And I got that bag on Saturday, must be Saturday two weeks ago. So if yesterday was the 9th, I'm going to say the weekend before was the 2nd. So I'm guessing it would have been the last Saturday in February when I met Miff Warhurst for the first time. And also Zan Rowe, met them twice at the front of the queue for the merch, the very, very front. And then 20, 25 minutes later, drifting around and realised that they were still going. And I thought, oh, let's get some more merch. And they, they couldn't quite comprehend the fact that I'd already bought a bag and a tea towel and was coming, coming back for more. I think all up I bought three tea towels and two bags. Oh, and a poster as well. But the funny thing was, Zan, look at her face when she saw... When I pulled out one of the posters, because <clears throat> it was their very, very first bang on live. And she had this look on her face like, where did you get that poster? I don't know if the implication was, did you rip that off the wall? Because it was their very first one, but it looked old. And it had just been in my bag and it crumpled a bit. And so some of the colouring the coloring had come off where it had uh, just crinkled a bit. But I, the, just her reaction was, where did you get that? <laughs> I'm not saying she's like, did you steal that off the off the off the walls? No, 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 no. Uh, I ducked out uh, during part of the show because I'm a man of a certain age. I have prostate. It usually works very, very well. In fact, it works very, very well, ladies. Uh, but um, on that occasion, <clears throat> on that occasion, I did need to go and uh, relieve myself. And as Rampaging Roy Slavin is fun to say, please, ladies and gentlemen, please vacate yourself after you've vacated the premises. So I went for a wee. And while I was out there, lovely woman, lots of tats, uh, doing merch. So I bought a couple of things to make sure I got them. In fact, I did that. I, th- that was the main reason for leaving. But I thought, well, if the lineup's going to be huge, they said, well, we've got some merch. I thought, well, I don't want to run the risk of getting out there and and not getting stuff. So I zipped out and then took the opportunity to go for a wee as well. So I bought the merch, uh, came back, they were still there, and I bought more. And they were signing it. And what I said to them, and I truthfully meant it, I said, oh, it's for clients. And when I say clients, that means associates. So I was going to give it away, but I have had such a rough run with giving stuff away. Really, really have. Every now and again it works out. Diane from Trivia, she was very, very appreciative Last weekend, she went along and saw a comedy act with a plus one. And I don't need the gratitude. I just want to know the tickets that I pass on get used. <clears throat> poor old um, Paul or Dave. Paul, yeah, I'm going to say or Gary or Jeff. Somebody. Uh, surname is a, a military rank or a police rank. He, oh, the show got cancelled. And it was sort of my, no, it was 100% my fault for not letting him know because he turned up to it. Because when you buy tickets, if you give them to somebody, you've got to then pass on the QR codes or if they're checking off names, that could work too. But if you get notice of cancellations or changes, it comes to me, not to the guys going. And I had things going in left, right and centre. And I saw this thing being cancelled. I thought, oh, that just makes my day a little bit easier. Hadn't put two and two together and realised that the show that I was going to was at the Austral upstairs and the show that um, Sergeant Major, uh, 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 private, 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 private browsing, private browsing, that's a mock the week joke, he had no idea. So he's fronted up to the, uh, I think it was the Adina, no, the Ibis Hotel and, you know, lights are off, people aren't there. And he sent me a te- uh, an email, because he's an adult. He sent me an email and said, the show got cancelled. And I wrote back, 
thinking, oh, you're letting me know now when the show's just about to start? I said, why don't you let me know before I could have done something about it? And then I immediately wrote back and said, oh, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I offered him a replacement and he said, you know what, I'm jammed up now for for ages, a bit like me with, with festivals and what have you. So he didn't get a replacement. Okay, why am I waffling on about this? Uh, I'm trying to get things clear in my head. Lost my bag last night. And as far as I can tell, the only things I've lost really, or don't have at the moment, are a couple of phone charges, a water bottle that's mostly water. There's a... (laughs) Bunches and bunches of Melaleuca leaves. A t-shirt soaked in sweat from Bent Spoke Brewery in Mort Street, Canberra. I'll find out which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's the sprocket one, and I've got the crankshaft, <laughs> as the bishop said to the actress. Uh, and apart from that, oh, there might be a bunch of keys. No, no, uh, maybe, I don't know. Yes, yes, because I split the keys. One set in there, one set there. This is why I don't broadcast where I live, because my keys are now out in the ether. One, uh, two, two. One for a security gate, one for the front door. That's why I don't tell people where I live. That's that simple. And there's nothing identifying on there. Oh, no, because my books, which do have all of my contact details, but not my physical address, are in the side of the laptop bag that definitely came home. So... It's time to get going with the day. I'm going to retrace my steps, but not exactly. Because first of all, I'm not out the door at 8.50. So there's that. Also, there's a couple of places that I ducked my head into or spent some time. I don't particularly need to spend much more time in there. One of them is, until recently, one of my favourite places. But as I told the shift supervisor as I left, I said, you've got some toxic fuckwits in this place. And he shrugged his shoulders. Pretty much, what are you going to do? <clears throat> And that happened. And then I went from there to the polar opposite. I went from toxic masculinity to the weed chief. That's that's the cultural ambient equivalent of going from the equator to the North Pole or vice versa. I'm going to say the opposite. Oh, no, no, I won't. I'll say it's the, it is from the equator because you've got heat, hot, steamy, not steamy, <laughs> if you're into homoerotic, I guess, or oh, went into the sports bar, it's just wall-to-wall penises, <coughs> I don't know what it was. Anyway, uh, and then you go to the wheat shift, which I thought was closed. It looked closed. In fact, I cancelled, uh, sorry, I, I, I ordered another uh, ride share to take me off to the Westies, oh, God. Talk about going from the frying pan into the into the cool uh, uh, blue ocean back into the fryer. Son of a motherless goat. And uh, as I was waiting outside the the uh, wheat sheaf for the, the next Didi to turn up, uh, I heard noise and realised, no, no, no. It's it's cool. They've, it's a old heritage building and they've closed it right up. All I had to do was do this, push the door, <laughs> noise came flooding out, and there was beer, there was stout, there was whiskey, there was pool, there was cards, there was friendly, friendly, friendly stuff. So, hallelujah. I'm going to retrace my steps today, and I will see you if I'm looking at you. That's my publisher coming back to me with a little um, uh, tongue-in-cheek quip about the fact that, uh, yeah, references and such forth. Um, I'm going back to your right for the bank of seat again. It's Bill Quinn from the city of Mitcham. Holy smoke. This is good. I'll just do a little brief chat. Good morning. I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Goodbye for now. <coughs> so this is why you do voice exercises and you don't try and speak while you're lying down. But it is good training because watch this. It's currently 10 a.m. The news with Brian Blessed. Hello! News! Things are happening! It's hot! Hello! <clears throat> uh, and now a message from our sponsors. A massage from our sponsors. <laughs> yeah, good night. It's Dave from from uh, Frome Street Massage Parlour Dog Groomers and Knock Shop After 1.30. 
<laughs> Gee, somebody's keen. Uh, just go down the side lane, tap three times and ask for <laughs> Big Dave. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go. Bye. But see the difference? Before I've got, um, I should do a, a little cough. <sighs>